The following is a production of New Mexico State University. and welcome again to another episode of Long Live La Familia, the soap opera that speaks to your heart as well as your stomach. My name is Carrie Bachman and I'm your host for the series. Today we'll be watching the episode entitled No More Chicharrones and this episode again focuses on our family, the Sierra family. We have Grandpa Johnny, Grandma Juanita and their six children. In this episode we're going to be looking at Samuel in particular. He's their middle son. Samuel lives with Adela, his wife, and their young son, Chewy. All three of them live together with their, the grandparents in a multi-generational household. So that's kind of unique. This is an episode that makes me think about my lifestyle every time that I see it. What Samuel does is he goes to the doctor and he realizes that he has a health problem. He tries to figure out how to tell his family about it and what kinds of changes that's going to mean for him and his daily lifestyle. So I think you'll find it very provocative and interesting. As we do with our other episodes, we'll be watching this one in three separate segments. That gives us a chance to get back together and talk and look and to think about things and how they relate to our own lives, because that's what really what we're trying to do with these episodes, make some changes that will affect our health in a positive way. So the first thing that we're going to do here, if you can grab some paper and a pencil or pen like I've got here, I'm going to ask you as you watch the first segment to think to yourself, what is it that we do that makes us have a healthy lifestyle? And that can be a whole range of different things. I'm hoping you'll come up with some really exciting examples. Let's go ahead and take a, a look at the first segment. Samuel, dile adiós a tu tío Frank. He's going with the angelitos. Ay, mi hijito, why do you have to go? I love you. But you want to eat so many chicks that run you, mi hijito. Oh, Samuel. I love you, mi hijito. Don't go. You're going to be there with the angels. <laughs> Cambia tus hábitos, o tú también morirás, joven. Hola, pa. ¿Qué hubo, mijo? ¿Cómo está? Aquí nomás. You know, Dad, I sure miss working on the farm with you. Yo sé. Aquellos tiempos cuando trabajabas conmigo en la labor eran buenos tiempos. Ay, qué bien se siente trabajar con el cuerpo. Ahora siempre estoy sentado en el escritorio haciendo papeleo. Ever since I've changed jobs, that's all I do is sit. So, what did the doctor tell you today? Ah, sí. Mi visita a la doctora. Quería olvidarme de eso. I don't want to worry, Adela, Mom. But the doctor said I was at risk for heart problems. ¿Qué? ¿Problemas con el corazón? Sí. Casi se me bote la cadena. I started to think about Tío Frank and how young he died. No te compares tú con tu tío. 
Los riñones de mi hermano Frank ya no funcionaban. You know he didn't take care of himself. He was always reckless with his eating and his drinking. Nothing like you. Tus hábitos son mucho más saludables. La doctora me dijo que tendría que cuidar lo que como. Me dijo que comiera menos grasa y que hiciera más ejercicio. Well, the doctor knows her stuff. Less fat and more exercise is good for everyone. <laughs> well, maybe. Vente, vamos para adentro. And you can tell lots of girls what the doctor said while we eat. Oh, that won't be easy. A mí no me gusta traer malas noticias. Yo sé. Hola, mijo. How's the Nintendo Master? Va. Está sordo. No creo. Ahí está mi viejo. Me encanta verlo con su papá. Those two have so much in common. Yes, they both love videos en Chile Verde. Se ve que traen hambre. A ver si nos alcanza la comida. Hola, vieja. Mm. Everything looks so delicious. Including your wife? ¿Dónde está mi beso, viejo? Más tarde, I need to wash my hands. Oh. <laughs> Excuses. ¿Y qué te dijo la doctora, mijo? She said everything was just fine, right? No más tengo que... que... cuidar lo que como. What do you mean? She wants you on a diet or something? ¿Ya no puedes comer chicharrones o qué? Will you have to give up your chips and salsa too? She didn't say I had to give up anything. Tampoco exageres. No me dijo nada más. Entonces, ya no va a haber enchiladas para mi hijo. No more chili con queso. But those are his favorite foods. Entonces, ¿qué va a comer? Chewy, it's time for dinner. Mijo, vente a comer. Hey. Welcome back. Samuel has really had quite a day, hasn't he? It seems as if that doctor's visit really upset him quite a lot. Let's take a look at our lists here and compare them to Samuel's life. And I put together, oh, about six different things I think that make for a healthy life. Eating right, having a supportive family and friends, physical activity, job security and fulfillment, a spiritual life, and physical safety. Now, we think Samuel's life looks pretty grim right now, but he actually has some of these things going for him. He's got job security. He's got a supportive family. I'm sure no matter how difficult your life is, you've got good things going for you too. So take a minute at here as I'm washing my hands to think about what those, some of those things are. And just at the bottom of your page, write down what some three of the positive things are going for you in the area of health. For me, for example, as a nutritionist, I eat pretty well, I exercise, and um, I actually sleep pretty well too. I didn't have that on the list before, but um, that's one thing that's helpful. We want to, as, as we make any recipe, make sure that we're washing our hands and that all of our table and equipment is clean because it's really important both for younger kids and also for our older family members. Okay, so what we're going to be making today is a salad dressing. You may say, why are we making salad dressing? I can buy salad dressing in the store. But actually, salad dressing, if you make it yourself at home, is really a lot cheaper it's a lot tastier and mainly it's a lot healthier too. What we're going to be doing today is using the two main ingredients in any salad dressing. Some type of acid, which here we have apple cider vinegar, which has a nice sweet taste, and some type of oil. We're using olive oil, which because of its strong flavor, we can actually use less of it than in a normal salad dressing. So I'm going to measure in here two tablespoons of olive oil. And that's not very much for the amount of dressing that we're going to be making. You'll see here in a second compared to the amount of vinegar. A lot of times in a dressing, you use more 
oil than you do vinegar, but here we're using double the amount of vinegar compared to the amount of oil that we're using. And then, of course, this isn't really everything that's in a salad dressing. We're going to have to add some spices and some other flavors, and we'll do that after the next segment. Okay, let's go ahead and get ready to watch the second segment, and there are a couple of things I want you to pay attention to as we're looking at it. Take, pay special attention to the foods that the family is eating as they're sitting together at the dinner table, and also to how Grandpa's day, as he describes it, differs from some Wells' day. We'll take a look at that and then come back together and finish up our dressing. Le damos las gracias por los alimentos y te doy las gracias por mi familia. En el nombre de tu hijo, Jesús. Amén. Amén. And what exactly did the doctor tell you? La doctora me dijo que si no me cuido, me puede dar diabetes. Diabetes? ¿Cómo puede ser posible? Diabetes? Dad, you're not going to die, are you? Yo no quiero que te mueras. Amigo, todos nos vamos a morir algún día. But don't worry, I'm not going to die tonight. I don't ever want you to die, Dad. Yo que adiós, mi I know, son. Para empezar a comerme esta enchilada, me va a ayudar a vivir más tiempo. I'll just have to eat more of this. Rabbit food. Mmm. Hmm. Pass me the ranch. Samuel, I've always eaten un poco de todo, and I'm healthy. See? I have something of everything here. Abuelita, I learned about all this nutrition stuff in school. El libro que usamos nos explica la pirámide y todo eso. Dad, maybe if we show you my health book, then you won't die. Chewy, espérate. Samuel, de veras que tiene miedo que te vayas a morir pronto. This preoccupation with death isn't natural. I didn't realize that a simple doctor's appointment would have such an effect on everyone. Lo único que la doctora hizo fue darme un consejito. Ay, hombre. I'll talk to Chewy later. Después de cenar, nos vamos al campo a caminar. Yo te ayudo a explicarle a Chuy de la vida. A walk would feel good, Dad. But, but aren't you tired after a long day in the field? Yo no he hecho nada todo el día, pero estoy seguro que tú trabajaste mucho. What did you do today, Dad? What did I do today? Well, I had an early breakfast. Desayuné temprano. Then I walked to the new field to see how the plants are doing. Me fui caminando a un sembradillo nuevo a ver cómo iban las plantitas. I stopped to see Pedro and had some coffee. Pasé a ver a Pedro y me tomé un cafecito. From there I went to the canal and got everything ready for tomorrow's irrigation. De allí me fui al canal y preparé todo para la irrigación de mañana. I came home and had lunch with Juanita and Adela. Regresé a casa y comí con Juanita y Adela. Then we watched Los Ricos También Lloran. Vimos Los Ricos También Lloran. In the afternoon, I worked on the presents for the family reunion. Trabajé en los regalos para la reunión familiar. I came in for some iced tea and some fruit. Me metí a la casa y tomé un té helado con poquita fruta. Then I went to work in the garden. And what did you do? ¿Y tú qué hiciste? Well, I was running, I was running late. So I had to race to work. Ya iba tarde. Así que me tuve que ir corriendo al trabajo. I had three donuts and some coffee when I got to the office. Me comí tres donuts con un café cuando llegué a la oficina. Then I went to a long meeting, so I had to work through lunch to get my paperwork done. Me fui a una junta muy larga, así que tuve que trabajar la hora de comida para alcanzar a hacer mi papeleo. At some point, I ran down and bought two relleno burritos 
and a coke from the burrito lady. Ah, le compré dos burritos de chile relleno y una coca a la señora de los burritos. Then I set up my desk and sorted. Me senté en mi escritorio a separar las cartas. I had a candy bar and another coke during break time and felt like it was two days before five o'clock came around. Me comí un chocolate con una coca a la hora del break. Sentía que nunca llegarían las cinco de la tarde. Samuel, de hoy en adelante tendrás que decirle adiós a la señora de los burritos. Yep, and no more fast food for you. We'll have to start packing you a lunch and no more snacks. Voy a tener que llevarme mi propia comida. Y no comer entra comidas. Ay, 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 ay. See that? Here's the pyramid. Ah, gracias, mijo. A ver qué dice. Oh, look, it's a picture. It's from your brother. It's from Tio Ricardo. A ver. Looks like it's from Roy Oso. When they made that movie. Mm -hmm. Ah, sí. La película de vaqueros con Lou Diamond Phillips. Maybe they will bring some movie stars to the family reunion. Eddie, Becky, y Itzelin ya no vienen mucho a Nuevo México. Ojalá que vengan a la reunión. Let's think for a second, how did Grandpa's day compare to Samuel's? In almost all respects, it looks like Samuel's day was much less healthy. Think of Grandpa. He ate small, balanced meals with his friends and with his family while Samuel was running around eating a lot of fat and sugar and really stressed out by himself while he was eating. Another difference is Grandpa's job, being a farmer, is not an easy one, but he didn't seem to let it get him down, whereas Samuel, working at the post office, was so stressed out the entire day. And also, Grandpa got more physical activity than Samuel did sitting at his desk. Now think for a second, does your typical day look more like Grandpa's or like Samuel's? Well, I have a drawing here. This is kind of a fun thing to do if you get a chance and your kids enjoy it too. Kind of draw out from the morning all the way through your day until you go to bed at night exactly what happens during your day. And this is a way that you can kind of see what the positives are, what the negatives are, and things that you might want to improve. So think for, for a second, what are two or three things you might like to improve about your daily lifestyle? Now for me, I already eat well and I get a fair amount of exercise, but you know, I go to work and I tend to sit at my desk all day answering phone calls, working on the computer, and I very rarely even get up and take a break. So I'm going to try to make that a, a goal for myself over the next couple of weeks. So find another piece of paper, and what I've done here is I've written, gone ahead and written my goal down and it is to take a 15-minute walk break three times a week at work. Now that sounds pretty specific, and that's not going to be applicable to you probably, but for me it's helpful. I don't have to try to do it every single day because I know that wouldn't happen. But if I know that I can do it three times a week for just 15 minutes, that's doable, something I can achieve and then build on the success and decide on another goal once that has been achieved. So go ahead and think some, a little bit about your goal, and I'll be finishing our salad dressing as you're doing that. We're going to be adding what I had mentioned before is really important, which are the things that add flavor to our dressing. And first off, you can see here I've got some green onions. I've got a fair number of them. And then what you're going to do once you've got them all chopped up is go ahead and just plop them straight into your jar. This is one of those one dish recipes, I guess you could say. And now what we're going to be doing is adding a little bit of salt. and a lot of people add more salt probably than they need to to things. And that's one thing if you cook a lot, you can adjust things. And over time, you don't need to use as much. So I'm going to put in just a quarter of a teaspoon here. Some people might have put in you know, more than that. But this is a good amount for me. Our mystery ingredient, which I mentioned before, that's going to be fruit jam. And it can be any type of conserves other than, than jelly, which is really too thick for this purpose. What we're going to do is we'll scoop out half a cup worth but you can use whatever kind of jam you would like. Strawberry is one of my favorites for this recipe, but if you think about 
dressings that you can buy at the store or get from a fancy restaurant. They have raspberry dressings, apricot dressings, all kinds of things. And we're going to go ahead and put that right in here in with everything else. You can see the color is just going to be beautiful. Okay. Now we've got some ingredients that we're going to use with our molcajete, which as many of you probably use this at home already, it's a mortar and pestle and it's kind of of the lava rock. And what you can do is use it for grinding. We've got three things we're going to put into here. First we'll do the dry ingredient, which is, as you can see, some peppercorns. I'm just going to use a few because a lot of people don't like too much pepper, but just kind of mash them up as fine or as coarse as you want them, dump them into your hand, and then put them straight in here. We do those first because they're dry. Now we're going to go for some garlic. And if you're like me, you like a lot of garlic. So you can just kind of put the whole clove in here, kind of leave it in one piece like this, so that when we put it into the dressing, we can get it out later, and somebody doesn't get a surprise of a whole bunch of garlic in their salad. Now, the last thing, and this is one of my favorite ingredients, this is called ginger root. And ginger root, we're familiar with because we see it in ginger pie, ginger snaps and uh, gingerbread, for example. Uh, let me use a knob off of this one here. You're going to use a good size amount because we're not going to actually mash it all up into small pieces. We're going to take this huge amount and put it straight into here. It looks like a lot, but because it's pretty much whole still, it's not going to add that much flavor. Okay, so we've got everything. Let's just check that we've got everything into our dressing. We do. And we just put the lid on and shake. And it's pretty thick, so if you'd like, you can add a little bit of water to thin it out. That's really just preference on your part. We've got some other dressing I made yesterday out of some blackberry jam. So you can kind of see, look at that beautiful color as well. This is thinner because I added some more liquid. So you can really thin it out if you'd like to. In the store, you'd be really lucky to find any dressings that are like this for any price. And just look how easy it was for us to make it here. Now how does this actually relate to the Sierra family? Well, think for a second about what they were eating at the dinner table. Samuel thought, I've got to eat rabbit food. And so he asked for the ranch dressing, and they pass it to him, and he poured on gobs and gobs of ranch dressing. Now, if you were to make a dressing, a simple dressing like this at home, and spoon out dressing actually into the bowl of salad and dress it yourself before you serve it to your family, the dressing will distribute a lot more easily, and then you won't be eating as much dressing either. So there's going to be a, a gain in calories and, and a health gain as well. Now the sweet taste of these dressings is also really nice because children tend to like vegetables with a little bit of a sweet taste, and so do adults like Samuel, who's not real big on vegetables. Now, we noticed um, a little bit in this last segment of the video that Samuel's family is trying to help him out, but they're not really sure how to do that the best way. They think that the thing that they need to do is tell him, oh, you have to eat all of these special diet foods and the rest of us are going to continue on with our lifestyle. If you make dressings like this and, and have things that change for your entire family, it's really a better approach because then your, your family member who's trying to make some changes doesn't feel left out. So let's keep that in mind as we're watching the third segment and think specifically about Chewy or Samuel's son. We've seen him a little bit in these earlier segments. We want to think about how his lifestyle is developing and what habits he's going to carry on into adulthood. Mom, can I go play some Nintendo now? Por qué no vamos mejor con tu papá a regale el huerto? Ah, that's a good idea, Dad. Chewy, you've played Nintendo every night this week. After we water, the three of us can go for a walk. No puedes jugar Nintendo todo el día. Una caminadita nos hace bien a todos. Ah, oh, Grandpa, a mí no me gusta caminar. May I be excused? Abuelita, con permiso. Tienes permiso. Ah. Viejo, no te preocupes por lo que te dijo la doctora. Vamos a comprarte comida especial de dieta. For starters, we can get you some of that no-fat margarine instead of butter. Mm. Andale, esa margarina sin grasa no está tan mal, eh? Mm. Eh, but I like butter. <laughs> Nunca tenía 
tenía que preocuparme por la grasa. I don't know the first thing about eating right. We can even set up a separate area in the fridge and cupboard just for your food. Ves un lugar especial para tu comida especial. I'll just move the junk food so it won't tempt you. Mijo, I can make you diet jello for dessert. Huh. Yeah, sin jalitina, sin azúcar, and muchísimo sabores. You don't have to stress yourself, Mijo. <laughs> Ay, perfecto. It sounds just great. There's got to be more to life than fake margarine. Your mom and I will work on a menu and shopping list just for you. No te preocupes. No vas a tener ningún problema después que comiences tu dieta nueva. It's not a very happy ending to our story, is it? Samuel's family is trying to help out, but really he's ending up being feeling really deprived. Let's think for a second about the goal that you've set and how your family and friends can help you achieve it. In my case, what I'm going to do is talk to my coworkers at work, because some of them might like to join me on my break and walk outside. And you know, even if they don't want to join me, they won't expect to see me at my desk all day. So that's something important too. Now, as we were watching the last video, the last segment, I went ahead and got our salad put together here. We've got some mixed greens. You remember the darker greens are healthier for you generally than the lighter lettuce. And then I've got some cauliflower in here, some broccoli, those raw vegetables. Mmm, they're delicious. And look at this right here, apricot. You might say, fruit in a salad? Well, we've already got fruit in our salad dressing. And these, these apricots are actually right off a neighbor's tree. And I encourage you, when at all possible, try to use local produce. Because number one, we're supporting our local growers. And number two, it tastes so delicious. And it's often a lot cheaper and healthier for us, too. So we've got our salad here. And as I mentioned, I added a little bit of water just to thin the dressing down. I'm going to toss it with a little bit of dressing. That's one tablespoon just so you can have a sense of how much dressing we're using. Two tablespoons, and I'll put a third, but that's probably even more than we need. And this is certainly enough salad to serve two people. And two tablespoons is a normal serving size for dressing. So actually, we've got less dressing on this than, than you normally would on a salad. OK. Hope you try the dressing at home sometime with your, your own family. And you can like invent and put in any kind of spices, use any kind of jam. It works great. I'm afraid we're out of time for today. So until next time, I hope that you have some good luck with the goal, the health goal that you've set for yourselves. And long live our families. The proceeding was a production of New Mexico State University. The views and opinions in this program are those of the author and do not necessarily represent the views and opinions of the NMSU Board of Regents.